Hello everyone and welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today, well, we're going to be taking a look at um, another ThinkPad but um, I realise that uh, this is going to be the third potential Windows XP machine we've looked at in a row. So um, yeah, <coughs> half-hearted apologies there. However, this ThinkPad um, hopefully could be the answer to um, a challenge I set myself a couple of years ago. Now, um, I'm going to put it out there that uh, one of the best ever Pentium M machines I've ever used is the Dell Inspiron 6000. You know, I put a 1.86 GHz processor in there, 2 gigs of memory, 100 gig hard disk, and that thing positively screams along. But, I have a feeling that um, IBM could throw something equally matched, if not better, than the Inspiron 6000 at it. And I thought the answer to that, I thought IBM's answer to that machine was the IBM ThinkPad R51. Uh, see Jack Stavros' channel if you want more information on that. Um, unfortunately, it turned out not to be the case, as the uh, ThinkPad R51 uh, basically was um, a generation lower than the um, Dell Inspiron 6000. It only took DDR1 memory and had a 400 megahertz front side bus rather than a 533 that um, is in this machine. Now what this is, is the ThinkPad R52, which I'm guessing is basically the DDR2 version of the R51. Sold the R51 a wee bit ago, but I knew I was going to be getting something similar, and you know, I actually actively looked for the ThinkPad R52. So now that I have one, Let's have a look at it. Okay, so the usual tour. So on the left hand side we have two USB ports. Um, S-Video out, or what looks to be S-Video out. Um, Ethernet and modem. Headphone out, microphone in. A vent. A mini Firewire port, kind of nice. PCMCIA or card bus card slots. And then on the front we have um, really nothing at all apart from the lead opening catch. On the right hand side we've got kind of more of a design. Um, what I believe to be the hard disk caddy and then this kind of looks like someone's put the wrong sized optical drive in but you know I mean there's um, kind of a, a flap there or something so you know maybe it could be right. In fact uh, the lock for the opt optical drive has been screwed down so uh, yeah um, then we have a DB, well, then we have a DB15 VGA port, D-sub, no, DB15 is the Mac one, you know, scratch it, yeah, D-sub VGA port, um, then we have the battery, which does hold a charge, I don't know how much of one, but it does hold one, um, power supply, DCN, and... IEEE 1284 parallel printer port. Now, all is well, except this lid seems a wee bit scratched, and I don't know what that is. All I can say is it looks greasy. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've got a couple of ways I could uh, get around that. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards the wrap the whole thing in, uh, wrap the whole lid in vinyl blue vinyl wrap thing. Anyway, <clears throat> let's switch it on and see what um, what's happening on this machine. Oh, but before we do, we get to see a very, very worn out UK keyboard, the R51, some of you might remember, it had a Spanish layout, 
this is a very worn out UK layout. Um, Um, we have a uh, track point as well as a trackpad. Look at this Windows XP badge. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> um, and we have a uh, fingerprint scanner. So that is um, pretty good. And um, I did notice a uh, Bluetooth um, LED on here. And... Um, well, IBM would make ThinkPads and would only put the provisions on uh, that the machines actually have. Not like Acer back in the day that would put all the switches on and confuse you and it'd be like, why is the Bluetooth not working? And you basically, <laughs> sorry to use such language, but you're literally frigging the Bluetooth switch. And it's, it's like, the Bluetooth's not working. Oh, wait, no, this, this, this. This doesn't have it, just has a switch for it. Why, eh, sir? Why? Anyway, um, so let's have a look at this machine. Okay, so here's a problem. It's saying the hard disk is not compatible. Hopefully I can sort that out, you know, hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, so this is a Pentium M processor, 1.73 GHz, 768 megs of RAM. I would like to up that if I can. Ideally it's going to have 2 gigs in it, but I'm pretty sure I don't have that amount of memory. So uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but I do have a tub of memory. Oh. Look at this, it's it's apparently got an XP install on it. Would you look at that? I might actually plug it in because of, you know this this has been sat for about a week. <coughs> I forgot to do the Brandon Bishop honourable decent thing. Um which was to turn the camera off before it got to the desktop lest something incriminating happened. So this kind of looks like it's been given a fresh install of Windows. Basically a similar thing to what I would do with a machine. Um, look at that, IBM Corporation, IBM Pentium M processor, 1.73 gigahertz. Uh, it's got Service Pack 3. I wonder if um, I wonder if the person selling it literally just kind of put did this themselves biometric uh, co-processor um, hard disk drive and it could be that the hard disks firmware is out of date and could need updating so I'll I will check into that you know I mean. I might not even ever have to take out the hard disk of this. I mean, obviously, um, obviously, I, you know, probably put a bigger one in. I mean, this is a forty. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> yep, that's a forty gig drive. Um, let's have a look at. Um, let's have a look at what we've got for uh, graphics. Mobile Intel nine fifteen GM. So I, w I would say that this is basically the be the larger version of the X41 that um, I showed you guys last week. And it's the same graphics that you would find on a Dell Inspiron 6000. I've not used OpenOffice for ages. Oh, oh, here's a blast from the past. Windows Messenger. You, you remember when that was a thing that existed? <laughs> um, what else can I show you on this? <laughs> I 
Yeah, so Bluetooth is on here, um, but the drivers are not. So, I mean, this will need a driver installed. I mean, chances are what I would probably do is just give it a good old-fashioned Windows reinstall. And that's not a bad idea, even before... Even, really, even before actually um, doing anything on this, especially putting it online, because... I never trust Windows installs, even even though I do them myself, you know, and obviously, I mean, I could say, till the cows came home, Oh, look, but my, but my machines are fine, you see. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with my machines. They're all fine. I'll give you them in a really, really good condition, and you'll be like, Oh, jeez, this is absolutely fine. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so, first thing I want to do is find out what memory modules I have, and then maybe think to, I don't know, how, uh, how would the kids say, upgrading the shit out of this laptop? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so, yeah. But before I do, I'm just going to have a look at what size this memory module is. Oh, it's a... That's helpful. Another 256. <laughs> Isn't that always the way, folks? Well, I'll be back once I've found, a, once I've found some reasonable upgrades to apply this machine with. So, I've done some rooting about, and, um, well, I have some parts to install in this ThinkPad to upgrade it. First of all, what I believe to be a Toshiba 80GB hard disk drive. <clears throat> and I believe one of these memory modules, I'm going to say this one here, I believe is actually a one gig memory module. I didn't I wasn't too sure if I had any of these left, but um it appears I have one. I did find a two gig module and the plan was that I would install that in uh, one of my other machines that's running a you know a more recent version of Windows and then take out the one gig module and put it in here alongside this one, but um, that 2 gig module, well, it's a wee bit faulty. Don't need it. So, that's all very well and good, but I'll tell you something else I found as well. See, when I did buy the CPU upgrade for the ThinkPad R51, I originally bought a CPU that had a 533 MHz front side bus. I installed it and I found that um, actually the machine needed a CPU with a 400 MHz front side bus. So I sourced one of those uh, CPUs, which is absolutely fine. Um, but uh, what became of that spare 533 MHz CPU? Well, I found that out as well. I believe this to be a Dothan, like uh, the one that's already in here. And this isn't exactly a slouch, but, um, you know, if I really want to put this head-to-head -head against the um, Dell Inspiron 6000, then, you know what, why not install the... Uh, higher powered processor so that is exactly what we're doing here now I wanted to be sure that um, this would actually um, work properly <clears throat> so I've actually uh, been on to the ThinkPad wiki uh, ThinkPad's uh, thinkwiki.org um, it's actually really quite a good resource this for um, you know if you're using thinkpads and what have you um, and this will tell me 
that um, it can take a Pentium Dothan, what, uh, Pentium M Dothan 1.73, 1.86 or 2 gigahertz CPU. So if I go to the uh, page on the Pentium M Dothan core, um, I can see that um, the 740, which is the 1.73 gigahertz, 1733 megahertz, um, is a 533, as is the 1866, or 1 1.86 gigahertz. Anyway, hopefully this processor should work in this machine. This is um, basically what um, I was hoping to demonstrate on here. Right, with that said, let's actually uh, take this thing apart. Set rep, I had sleepy sleepy time because I was tired, um, but now I've come back to the ThinkPad. Um, and, um, well, I've managed to get the uh, palm rest and keyboard removed without too much of a problem. I've removed the memory as well. And what we're going to do now is upgrade both that and the CPU. Now I'm just going to go over here. See, I'm over here now. <laughs> I'm just going to grab some thermal paste. Because I'm going to need it. <clears throat> Hopefully the fans won't spin up anywhere near as fierce on this. Excellent. Right, I have thermal paste. Good. Okay, um, I'm going to use, um, I am going to now remove the heatsink assembly on this machine, the fan assembly. And uh, the way to do that is just quite literally unscrew it. There we go. And... I need to be careful how this goes. Right, I'm just gonna just gonna remove these screws from here because you know I I don't want to be losing the heatsink screws. This is not something you want to be doing. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to then unplug this tiny wee plug here. <coughs> And then I just pull this up the way and outwards. And there you, there you have it. It's, um, there you have it. Now, to remove the screws, what I'm going to do is put my hand over where the screws are. And then just tip this up very carefully. And then the screws fall out into my hand. It's kind of good. And now you can see underneath, there's a CPU. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, what I want to do is um, I'm going to remove the old thermal paste, which actually kind of looks like um, it's uh, it kind of looks like Arctic Silver. So um, you know, I'd like to applaud IBM. I mean, why wouldn't you? But I would like to applaud them on. Um, actually not using that cheap nasty white stuff that tends to that tends to just kind of harden for no reason right there seem although there does seem to be a bit on this heat sink that just will not come off um, I'm not sure if that is a dried on thermal paste or a deep scratch um, Although that is a bit worrying. It's... But uh, what can you do? Anyway, what I can do, what I will do, is uh, see if we can find a, um, a flat head screw. 
There you go. Um, well, the flathead screwdriver, rather. I need one. Uh, where is it? Ah, that should do. <clears throat> so I'm just going to change these heads over. And then what I'm going to do with this, actually I think I'm going to need a bigger one, so uh, I'll uh, do that. I don't want to, you, you really don't want to be using too small of a um, driver bit, because, you know, you could end up uh, causing problems or, you know, um, or even just stripping the screw head. That's not something I want because the screw that I'm away to turn is actually the um, the lock for the uh, CPU socket. So basically, all you need to do is just turn it anti-clockwise, and out comes the CPU. And I'm just going to take notice of where the uh, key is, as in where there's a pin missing. Um, so I know which way the replacement CPU should go in. On these Intel ones, you can also tell by where the labels are at, generally speaking. But um, don't use don't use that as a definitive guide of which way up a processor is supposed to be, because uh, you never know if they've put it on wrong. You do, however, have a nice wee gold triangle there, uh, which tells you where the key is. So that's the 1.73 gigahertz processor. Now it's time to install the 1.86 gigahertz processor. There we go. Sure the CPU die is nice and clean. I love to see these CPU dies. All shiny and stuff. I guess in that case I'm like a jackal or a jackass. <laughs> um yeah. So here's the replacement chip, and it too somewhere has a gold triangle. Excellent. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop it in. Uh, yeah, some somewhere. Ah, uh, James. Oh, actually, this seems to have a golden triangle on the other side. Oh, this is uh... I thought that was... <laughs> Just had a bit of old thermal paste on the uh, one of the pens there. That's that's not what I want. There we go. Okay. Probably best not to blow on a CPU actually, you know, because you could be getting moisture and what have you in the pens and that's not something you really want to be doing. There we go. So that is in. Same way as the other one. And to, uh, you know, to reinstall the CPU properly, it's basically just the reverse of uh, what I've done before. So, just, yep. Just turn the uh, latch completely, uh, well, just turn it clockwise this time. Um, 
I'm just going to I'm just going to double check my work here. There we go. <clears throat> right. And then next thing you want is a tiny wee blob of thermal paste. You really don't want anything more than that. Just, you know, a pea-sized... There we go. Um... And there are two schools of thought of whether you just kind of blob it on and let the uh, heat sink spread it or whether you actually spread it in, in place yourself manually. I've always done the um, blob and spread, that sounds wrong, um, rather than actually spreading it manually. But, uh, you know, I mean, it really, well, just depends really. Um, it really is up to yourself. I mean, whatever you find works, do that. And I'm probably going to get about. I'm probably going to get a wall of comments. And, you, you didn't paste your CPU properly. Uh, beware of the the. Well, betides the person who doesn't paste their CPU properly. <clears throat> and the final part is. Um, Oh yeah, and I plugged the fan in as well. Remember to do that. Uh, I think um, I think even the best of us have uh, have failed on that um, aspect of building a computer. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drop these screws back in, um, and I'm, and then what you want to do is try and make sure they have even amounts of uh, torque. Um, you know, because you don't want to be torquing screws down um, inconsistently because um, you really, it's, um, well, you won't get to even heat spread, uh, you won't get even contact one on your uh, CPU. Um, Worst case Ontario, you could end up warping the board. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to use the. Um, I'm trying to use the uh, orange um, strips on either side of the screwdriver to count one time at a time. Oops. One, two, so I'm giving them each one full time. Yeah, this, <laughs> this does take some patience. Right. There we go. So that is in. It's a new CPU. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a wee bit of memory. Um, the idea here is uh, we're going, the idea here is we're actually going to add um, a gigabyte of memory. It's the part of the upgrade. I think this is a one gig module. I'm just don't have the magnifier here with me, so I'm just going to chalk it up to guesswork. Um, so, you know, fit in memory. Standard form. Put it in at about 45 degrees. Make sure the notches all line up and um, what have you. And then just push it down. Now, what I want to do before I put this thing back together let just check it actually boots because there's nothing worse than buttoning a machine down only to find that you have to re-disassemble it. Um, so, with that spirit, what I'm going to do is just plug the keyboard in. The, uh, the power button actually is on the keyboard. And, um, 
I'm going to plug the machine in, give it some power. Um, you know, it's safe to run the machine like this if you know what you're doing. Um, don't try and attempt this if you if you're not sure what you're doing, uh, what have you. Um, otherwise, interesting things might happen. So let's um, see if 20 foot flames shoot out of the top of this thing to borrow a UXW bellism. Right, well, the machine still powers on. Right, okay. Now, this is a problem. Um, I'm not getting any post. And it's not even Sunday, so there should be post. <laughs> <laughs> no post on Sundays! No blasted letters today! See, if this was Professor Dumbledore's machine. Anyway, um, now, I probably should have best stuck with the original memory module, so that's mistake number one. Um, you know, if you're doing an upgrade of various and sundry parts, probably best to try one part at once before, you know, yeah, troubleshooting is a thing that exists. Right, I'm having this, uh, this really does not want to this keyboard connection really does not want to cooperate with me anymore. Uh, right, good, sorted. Um, right, okay, just for the sake of uh, ease of use, I'm going to try this 256 meg memory module. Which I believe to be working. Um, See if I can plug this thing back in. Right. Let's, um, let's see if I get any post this time. Yep, I do. Excellent. That is fantastic. So the CPU seems to be uh, seems to be working enough to let it post although it does seem to be taking its sweet time I'll tell you all right so there we have there we are Pentium M processor 1.86 gigahertz so that has been a resounding success very glad about that. Um, now, I just need to uh, sort the memory out. See if I can get something reasonably good working. Worst case scenario, I'll have to see if I can get uh, two 512s going in this thing and just have a gig for now. And then, you know, at some point along the line, install... You know, maybe try and install a two gigabyte memory module, uh, two gigabyte kit. Um, but um, yeah, right, I don't even know if this. I don't even know that this memory is right for this machine. So anyway, I think what I will do is I will go off camera now and see if I can rebuild this. I'll be back once that is done. And we're back. And this ThinkPad has been rebuilt. How well it works, I, I will never know. 
until I actually power up and install an operating system. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, first though, I'd like to say that uh, replacing the hard disk has not taken away the, um, the message about the um, hard disk not being uh, compatible with the machine, but it should be fine. So, let's uh, let's get straight to it. Excellent. Oof. I was getting a wee bit worried there, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, my worries still aren't going away. Um, hopefully, um, I'm, I'm hoping this isn't a sign of things to come. I mean, this has booted, but it was that was a bit slower than I would have hoped for. But um, uh, what are you going to do? At least this is a nice big screen to work on. The um, X41 is quite a tiny screen. And, uh, yeah... But I mean, this shares a lot of the same drivers with the X41 as well, so, uh, you know, it should be easy to get the basics up and running, and then I'll, um, I'll jump on the network and get the rest of the drivers downloaded and installed and what have you. So, I will be back with you. I'll be back with you all in a wee bit. So... Windows is installed. Um, I think I might have waited too long between uh, starting the Windows XP setup and updating you guys because this machine is now fully installed. Then again, you don't have to set through a Windows XP install for the third video in a row, so I guess that's a good thing. So let's switch on this machine. Still runs kind of hot, but um, yeah, it's it does run pretty well though. I must admit, you know the um, the CPU upgrade was definitely worth it. The stupid hard disk error is still a thing. <coughs> so what we're we running Windows XP Professional with unofficial service pack four. They did bring out a 2017 version, but unfortunately. I had some issues with that and .NET Framework, so, uh, yeah. I will have to conduct more testing, though, to see whether that service pack really is at fault or whether it was the way I originally set it up. So, we're at the desktop. And um, there's a few things uh, on here. My Bluetooth places. This machine has the Bluetooth. Um, Access IBM. Again, this machine has the Access IBM. Um, and it does take a bit for some reason, but um, if I press if I press dust button, then this machine will emit a noise like Jack Stavros's YouTube channel. In, indeed, that's how it happens. <laughs> Um, and this this was kind of the precursor to the ThinkVantage toolbox, which then became the uh, the ThinkVantage Solution Center. <laughs> but uh, what have I installed on here? I'll tell you what I've installed on here. I've made this machine a 2005-2006 time capsule, is what I've done, or at least my 2005 to 2006. Um, obviously with some of the apps that I didn't have back then that I would have loved. So I have the full 
uh, creative suite, including Adobe Audition. Um, I have um, Work Suite 2006. Oh look, there it goes again, Work Suite. How original. Um, Java Development Kit, uh, kit um, Paint Shop Pro 9, Corel Draw 12. Um, I mean, this was something I did actually use back in the day. Just Paint Shop Pro. This this was always a good one. I can so I can show you something on this that I remember. Um, oh yeah, you still love this. The picture tube. This was something on uh, Paint Shop Pro. Um, so let's see, ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Absolutely fantastic. Got a new picture to do stuff with and there's a paint tube so as you can see we've got all different things so you've got 3d um, 3d gold so that literally will paint kind of a snake almost and then you've got art group basically that just prints art supplies over uh, your picture um, Autumn Leaves is quite a nice one. So basically, I mean, you could use this for um, artistic flair if you wanted. Um, obviously then, you know, one might question how much of uh, any content you create using these um, as original, but, um, you know, just to mess about with, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I used, um, I used one of these to... Um, I used a picture tube to make um, some desktop backgrounds back in the mid 2000s. Um, in fact, what I did is I used. Um, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did actually. Um, basically, I took. Um, I had the um, the three D gold. What I did. Basically, just collect around. You know, made. A bunch of uh, gold balls as you will and then I changed the hue of them um, so that they were actually more of a bluey greeny color and basically that's how I did that snack <laughs> Alright, well, I think we've um, I think we've had enough of uh, boring paint programs, so uh, let's do something fun. So this is the original Need for Speed Underground. So let's do a quick wee race, shall we? Uh, what am I going to use? VW Golf, Honda Civic. Oh shit! Whoops, that that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, another Honda Civic. Oh look, it's a Pugiot. <laughs> Usual. Uh, Mazda. I think it's an I drive a pink Miata. You know what? Let's do. Choose a colour. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. We can actually uh, can actually do stuff here. Right? Yeah. Okay. So basically, what we're gonna do. Uh, so let's make uh, what Homer Simpson believes to be uh, Nelson Muntz's car.
Oh, I can't do that. I was hoping to make a pink, uh, I was hoping to be, uh, <laughs> have a pink Miata, oh well, um, let's, let's, uh, let's choose a better car then. Oh, Toyota Celica. I don't, I don't, I... oh, Master RX-7, oh yes. There's absolutely, uh, there's absolutely no way I'm driving a ginger one. There we go. Much, much better. <laughs> uh, yep. Number of catch it on. I know I'm a noob, but um, apart from the occasional drop in frame rate, this game actually works really quite well. All right, let's see what I can do. Oh dear, I seem to have, uh, let's paint the town blue with my second hand paint. Ah! Ugh! As you can tell, I'm no good at this game. I especially didn't like how a lot of the mid-2000s Need for Speed games would take place AT NIGHT! I mean, I understand that's how it is, you know, you've got night races, you know, street racing tends to take place at night, place at night. I mean, it's hardly going to take place in the middle of the day now, is it? Yeah, this, this, oh, bloody hell. I find this very, very difficult to see. Ah! See, uh, the frame rate has, oh, went down this So I think that'll do it just about do it for Need for Speed because I'm certainly not going to be able to give you um, a good race. But uh, yeah, that is the uh, ThinkPad um, R52. What do I think of it? I fucking love this machine. I think it is brilliant. Could it give the uh, Dell Inspiron 6000 a run for its money? Oh, you bet it could. And that is something that I do plan to do actually on this channel is actually put these two machines head to head and see uh fit like um certainly um certainly would like to see uh, how they stack up against one another and yeah just um, see uh, you know if one is better than the other 
Um, I was going to say something else, but, um, you know, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I do plan to update this, uh, upgrade this machine to 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, that's actually coming in the mail, so uh, when that comes, when that gets here, I will obviously uh, drop the extra memory in it and um, have another shot of it. Um, but until then, I think uh, this will do it for this video. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to click on the links to subscribe to the channel, to like videos on Frontier on Facebook, and to follow me on Twitter. But for the meantime, please do feel free to join me for my next video.